Welcome to another Facebook Live. And if you're watching on YouTube, so good to have you. My name is Stephanie, Business Chic Mama. I am here to inspire you guys in your business. I am a top Etsy seller as well for many years. So I'm here to help you in your business. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Anyway, so let's get, let's start over again. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, something that is really, really important. Most people don't think about it, but let, let me get into, first, I you'd like to do something inspirational, I like to have an inspirational quote for you guys. And this one today is from the Bible, which I get a lot of my business wisdom for. It is my rock, the word of God, but whatever your religion you're at, you can definitely listen to the wisdom of God. So it is this Luke chapter six, verse 48. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid his foundation on the rock. When the flood came, the torrent crashed against that house, but it could not shake it because it was well built. So if you're building your house, your business, of course, the rock is Jesus in the scripture, but you can also apply this to your business. If you're building your business on things that are unscrupulous or get rich quick schemes or a foundation that's going to be shaky, you're not going to have a sustainable business. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you guys are doing that, but there's plenty of people that are looking to get rich quick. If you can build your business on a strong foundation, a solid foundation of integrity, sound business principles, and things that are going to sustain your business over the long time, you will have that rock. When the storms come, like what happened to me this week, I had one of my websites, they just like vanished. And when they come, I've got backups and I have other things that are, you know, going to help me out. But anyway, so today's topic is, it's a little bit of a hard truth that many Etsy sellers, excuse me, have never given much thought about. So what that hard truth is, is that you really don't own your Etsy shop. Yikes. Seriously. I surely didn't think about this when I first opened up my Etsy shop. So I'm going to tell you a few stories that can help put this into perspective. The other day I received a couple notices on my account, on my Etsy account, that two listings were removed due to trademark violation. Now, mind you, my Etsy shop sells jewelry making supplies. So I was kind of shocked. I looked at the listing, I couldn't find any trademark violation. These are beads, you know, until I looked at, I looked at the company who was filing the complaint against me. And another thing, Etsy doesn't tell you, like they don't tell you exactly what the violation is. You kind of have to figure it out. So as I researched these two products, I realized that I used the company's name unknowingly, which was totally generic, by the way, in the keywords. And this is absolutely insane, I'm thinking. I'm using like a few generic things in keywords. These were generic words, like beads and something in front of beads, but it didn't matter. Etsy takes trademark infringement, no matter how small, whatever violation, it's very serious. And even though I had absolutely no idea I was infringing on someone else's trademark, you know, that was it. So, gone. So let me tell you another story. I, um, I've been selling on Amazon for the past year and a half. And the other day I was in my back office and I happened to stumble upon the seller forums. And I normally don't participate in those because I find them actually very distracting. But this one kind of caught my attention. And in a nutshell, this longtime Etsy seller with over 30 employees and thousands of items listed she was saying that she opened up her laptop one day to find out that her account was deactivated. What? Seriously? She received this notice from Amazon. It was simply saying, um, you can no longer sell on Amazon. Not even a nice note saying, oh, you've been such a great long time partner with Amazon. Can we kind of work this out? No, not, nothing like that. So she was like posting this journey, how she was trying to reinstate her account and it took months and months and she was winding down this crazy path of emails and they were bouncing and she was trying to get answers and she couldn't. And I don't really know what happened at the end of the day, but it really made me think and I wanted to speak to all of you guys about this. And I'm telling you not to scare you, but to make you aware of the reality that I've seen and 
selling online and what's happening. And the reality is that your Etsy shop or any other uh, platform, you can be deactivated, can be deactivated anytime. And you're really at the mercy of Etsy's guidelines and algorithms and policies. And guess what? You have no control over this. So now what? So I'm not saying you should stop selling online because we all know selling online is here to stay. It's how I make my livelihood. It's my livelihood and it's the wave of the future. But I'm going to tell you right now how you can protect yourself if something like this ever happens and your account gets deactivated for whatever reason. Or even if Etsy decides to one day just close their doors for whatever reason, what's going to happen to your shop? Okay, so listen closely. So to build a sustainable business, it's 2019, but 2020, years beyond, you know, to have, it's important to have an asset. And what I mean by assets, not those physical assets like, for instance, beads in my shop, but the physical assets in your shop. But what I'm talking about is your email list. Your email list is by far the biggest asset in your business ask any marketer, any top business owner, they're going to tell you the same because your email list is, is, it's just gold. And even if your email service provider quits, you can take all of your files with your customer, e customer emails and no one can take that away from you. So if you learn how to build a solid email list with raving fans that love your product, you're going to have a sustainable business for years and years and years to come, doesn't matter if Etsy goes out of business, whatever happens, because email lists build relationships. You build them with your customers. So now another asset I wanna talk about is your website. And I know a lot of you don't have a website right now and don't worry about that, but this is just something to think about for the future. So if you build a website on a platform such as Squarespace or Wix or GoDaddy, all great platforms, by the way, and I've used many of them in the past. And I actually, my fashion design business is currently on one as well. And I'll probably be working on moving that to the different platform in the future. But you're in the same position. And hey, Monica, you really don't own your website either. So what is the answer? The answer is a self-hosted website such as WordPress. And unless you build this like self-hosted website, you're kind of in the same position at the mercy of the platform that which you're hosting your website on. So let's talk about WordPress for just a second. Um, it's a little technical, and to be honest with you, I was really afraid of WordPress when I started blogging about a year ago. Um, but I kind of cringed through all the fear, the uncertainty, the frustrations, because I knew I was actually building a sustainable asset that could not be taken away from me. With WordPress, you own your website. You can choose which plugins you want to have on your website. Basically, you control everything. Well, almost everything, of course. Wherever there's tech involved, there could always be a problem. But seriously, you are the landlord when you own a WordPress site in a nutshell. So today, the reason for today's conversation is not to scare you or make you freak out or just to give you a little more knowledge so you can be armed with some wisdom and understanding about running a sustainable Etsy shop and your business online. You know, finding these, the trademark violations are, are, are happening everywhere. And you may not even be realizing that you are infringing on someone's trademark. And done. Your shop could be closed. Uh, you can try to reinstate it. But all that hard work over years and years and years and years can be done in an instant. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. So absolutely, Etsy is an amazing platform. But do it with your due diligence. Grab your customers, which Etsy does not allow you to take their emails. You must do this on the back end when you send them a package. Or if you have a PDF, you can put that maybe on one of your photos and say, hey, get a free download if you join my email list. Some way to uh, connect your customers with you and your products so you have that asset. That asset can't be taken away from you. Okay, then again, if you're thinking of, you know, different touch points on the websites uh, with websites and, and blogs and things like that, consider WordPress 
because again, you own your website with WordPress, unlike all the other platforms out there. If it shuts down one day, it's gone. So <clears throat> I can't believe we're already at like almost, you know, 15, 12 minutes, something like that. It goes so fast. But anyway, so this is, you know, again, these are things that I've been dealing with for years, but I just sometimes have these aha moments and I'm like, wow, I bet you most people aren't even aware that these things are happening, especially if you're a new Etsy owner or you haven't even opened an Etsy shop yet. And just before I go, I want to just talk about um, trademark infringement. It is really, really serious. And if you're using other people's designs out on the web and using them as your own, this is really serious. You gotta really make sure that you're doing your due diligence if you're using clip art or things like that on the, on the website because it can definitely bite you uh, in the butt. <laughs> and you don't want that happening to you. So make sure if you know that you're doing, you know, if you need clip art, or if you need graphics, make sure that you're purchasing, purchasing them under commercial license, which allows you to use them in your product for sale, because there's different types of commercial licenses. This could be a whole nother um, video, but make sure that they are, uh, they are allowed you to sell products that are, you can print on them, whatever it is, and um, then you're covered. So this is just something on the side note, trademark infringements, really make sure um, it's happening all over the place. I'm constantly getting messages about, um, okay, this platform is, you know, now um, integrating this to make sure that, plat you know, trademark infringement is not happening, especially on Amazon. It's major on Amazon. Oh my gosh, you can just breathe and all of a sudden you have trademark infringement. Really crazy. So this is the future of business, guys. Make sure that that is something really, really, um, you know, important that you need to look into. So anyway, I'm going to cut it short today. Um, I think we're at 12 minutes, but is there any questions? I know you popped on a little late, Monica, but that's okay. You can watch the replay. For all of you that are watching the replay, make sure you go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. And also, hi. My workshop is coming up. This week is the meet and greet. I'm so excited to meet in a very intimate setting, a handful of you, so we can talk about your goals for your Etsy shop. And uh, go ahead and sign up. The link is below. And um, just super excited. The workshop will be in about two weeks. And that's it for all October. Doors are closed. Maybe I'll have one in, uh, in November. But, of course, we'll see. Anyway, any questions before I... Skedaddle. New, no, new, no, new. No. Okay. Um, thank you for joining me. If you guys are listening later, thanks for listening. Um, I hope this was valuable to you. If you have any questions at all, you know where to find me. I'm always answering my emails. I truly do care about your success. Um, I want you to succeed. It's just my passion to help others in business. All right, guys. That's it. I will see you in the next Facebook Live, on YouTube, in my YouTube, in my group, whatever. Have a great day.